Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edipedia World videos. So this is the part 4 video of SAP workflow. Okay. So here we'll discuss about some T codes, the administrative and the monitoring used in SAP workflow. The first one is SWU3. This transaction checks the most important basic customizing for the SAP workflow system environment. This transaction was already completed on the client production system. If the workflows do not start, check here to test the RFC connection. Okay. So the first one is SWU3. This transaction has to be executed on a production environment after the go live before the workflows start running in the system. Okay. So all the important customizing which you have to do for the workflow is done here. The initial settings for the workflows to run in the system. So here on the left side, we have different nodes, maintain runtime run environment, maintain definition environment, maintain additional settings and services, classify tasks as general and the guided procedures. Okay. So you have five different nodes here and we have different subtypes in that. So you have to select each of them, give the details and you have to execute it. Okay. You have to activate it. If the workflows do not start, check here to test the RFC connection. Okay. So later in the maintenance phase, if, if you find any workflows not running, so something has been uh, mingled in this transaction, maybe by mistake, somebody has deactivated something. So you can go here and activate it. Okay. So SWU3 is the basic T code automatic workflow customizing which has the most important configuration for the workflow settings. Now, maintain runtime environment. The activities performed in this section must be executed so that workflows can be executed. Here, you should find all green checks, status OK and no status of errors. So here, the first one is runtime environment. So here, the activities performed in this section, they should be executed so that the workflows can be executed. This is used for the execution of the workflow. When a workflow starts running, so it has to undergo certain phases. So all the steps under this maintained runtime environment help in the processing of the workflow. Okay, so you should make sure like all these steps are configured and you have all green ticks here. The next one is maintain definition environment. You have to execute the activities in this section to be able to create workflows. Here you should find all green checks, status OK and no status of errors. So in this definition environment, this helps in the creation of the workflows. Okay. Runtime, it helps in execution. Definition, it helps in creation. So here also you should find all uh, green checks. Okay. Then maintain additional settings and services. So the activities performed in this section must be executed if a particular SAP workflow functions are required. Okay. So in this additional settings and services. Okay. So here you should, uh, you should go through all these steps given here in this additional settings and services. Okay. So these are required for, as you know, the definition itself states for the additional services provided by a workflow, you have to activate all these steps okay the next one is classified tasks as general all the activities in this section declare sap tasks or sap workflows as general tasks so the system automatically classified these tasks as general tasks when you execute automatic workflow customizing the idoc interface activity is the only activity that should B status error in client because the workflow IDOC error tasks are not defined as general tasks. They are assigned to the IDOC support position in the HR organizational plan for client IDOC support organization. So in this classified tasks as general, we have the following test workflows, customizing with workflow, IDOC interface, SAP phone, processing the replies to deadline emails. Okay, so we have all these sections under this IDOC interface activity in this classified tasks as general and among this the idoc interface activity can be in error okay so this classified tasks as general tells you like what all workflow tasks are general tasks 
okay and sap says like the idoc interface activity can be in error but again see what all the customization we do in this SWU3 it is completely dependent on the client requirement okay so general guidelines is provided by SAP but we have to customize it as per the needs of our business okay so SAP says like this IDOC interface activity can be in error okay others you have to put them in green it's, it's up to the project discretion like what they want to activate it or not and the last section is the guided procedures execute the activities in this section so that the guided procedure process templates can be executed on the business workflow engine okay so when we talk about SWU3 we have five different sections okay so we have discussed about all these maintain runtime environment maintain definition environment maintain additional settings and services classified tasks as general and guided procedures okay so we activate what all are necessary now the next one is very important swell and swells event log before you use the event log swell swell displays the event log you must make sure it's activated turn on the event trace by using transaction swells swells is used to activate or deactivate this event trace and you check the event log using swell a pop-up will appear that will tell you if it's on or off if it's off click the button to turn it on okay so when when you execute swells this is how the screen appears so if it's off you turn it on if it's on you can turn it off you can toggle it and warning an activated event log can lead to bad performance and must not be activated constantly in a production system the event trees is a great tool to have on in development and test systems sap recommends turning the event trace off after production is stabilized and the workflows are running smoothly okay so this event trace if it's continuously activated in the production system okay it will lead to poor performance so if you want to do any sort of debugging please do in the development or the test systems by turning on the event trace there okay so unless and otherwise if it's really required please don't switch it on in the production environment okay this is about swell and swells swells is used to switch on or off the event trace and swell is used to display the event log okay so this is very useful transaction in troubleshooting various workflow issues because all the workflows are triggered by events so if the event is deactivated or something is changed in the event settings you can analyze it from here the next one is SWE2 or SWET YPV both are same it's the event type linkage the client workflows are triggered by an event therefore it is important to make sure that the event occurs in the event log you can see the event its business object type and the receiver type for the event and the event linkage needs to be activated so all the workflows are triggered by the event so it's very important to make sure like the event is triggered or not okay so here you see the different event type linkages so you have the the object category the object type the event and the receiver type okay whether it's on or off if you check it if you tick it it says like it's on it's activated otherwise it's off the linkage okay so this receiver type this object type this object category are, are linked with this event so this the linkage is determined here so if this event is triggered all these workflows run so that sort of linkage is displayed here and this is mostly taken care by the sap workflow developers the next transaction is SWU0 it's the event simulation if you have found no receiver type in the event log, then you should check transaction SWU0 event simulation. In this transaction, you can simulate an event. The system will check all the workflows that could be triggered by the event and tells you whether or not they were triggered. So, in the last transactions, we have discussed about swell, okay, and swells. Swell, we check the event log swells is used to activate or deactivate the event log then swe2 it shows the event type linkage now swu0 event simulation 
say like in SWE2, we have not found the receiver type, okay, for the workflow, for a particular workflow, then we can simulate that event. So here, the system will check like what all workflows are triggered by that event and whether they are triggered or not. Information is displayed for the workflows that were not triggered successfully. Only the client workflows should be triggered. If other invalid workflows are triggered, they should be deactivated. Okay, so you have to activate only the client workflows which have to be triggered and please switch off or deactivate all other workflows. So here in this SWE2, you have to check like what all work, uh, workflows are required. Okay, so this event type. Okay, so for an event like what all workflows will get triggered, please activate only those and the others should be deactivated. So to use transaction SWU0, you enter the object type, the event and you execute the icon to simulate the event. So this is nothing but an event simulation transaction. The last transaction which we will discuss in this video is SWI1. So, so far we have discussed about the administrative transactions of workflow in this video, okay. This is more or less a monitoring decode. Work item list. Use transaction SWI1 to determine which workflows are running in the production system, okay. So, you use this decode to check like what all workflows are running in the system. If a workflow has been correctly triggered and started, at least one work item should be created. Use this transaction after you have checked the event log. Okay, so we use SWI1 to check like what all workflows are running in the production environment. It shows you like what all workflows have been executed irrespective of their status. So if a workflow has been correctly triggered and started, at least work one work item should be created. So when, when a workflow starts, okay, say like it has at least started correctly, you have at least one work item in it n number of work items form a complete workflow okay so a workflow will have n number of work items okay each has its own status so, so if a workflow is at least started you will have at least one work item under it use this transaction after you have checked the event log by default all of the work items of the last hour will be displayed by default generally last one hour work items will be displayed so swi1 shows you at the work item level okay so you can see the workflow as well as the respective work items under it you will find in this transaction work item number the status of the work item and the workflow task that has created the work item so all these details the work item number the status of the work item and the workflow whatever what task which has created this work, work item to display the work item details just double click on the item from the details you can see the selected agents for this work item using the menu go to you just go to agent and you see like whether it's a selected possible or excluded agents also all the details of the work item you can find like which workflow it is under which which task it is under okay the agents and all the details okay so when the status of the work item shows an error you should check the workflow log using edit display workflow log here you can see errors that have occurred okay so you can check the log also say like if a work item has status error you can see the corresponding log like why it has failed okay so swi1 is used daily in monitoring okay so you find all the error work items here and you can analyze them accordingly depending upon the errors okay so just to wind up this video this part 4 we have started with SWU3 automating workflow customizing okay we have different nodes under it and depending upon your business requirements we have to customize activate what all things which we need here so this is done initially after go live before the workflow start running in the system okay and in case if you find any issues later in the maintenance phase okay the basis the workflow administrator has to check this decode okay say like somebody has by mistake deactivated something okay, or whatever it is okay and we have to take the corrective steps then the next one is swell and swells the event log 
to display the event log and to activate or deactivate the event log an event log should generally if if say like if you want to uh, troubleshoot a particular workflow we do it in the test or the development environment by switching on the event log there okay if you switch on the event log in the production system for a long time it will cause performance problems so we should be careful about that the next one is SWE2, the event type linkage. Okay, so here you find the different events. Okay, so a workflow will, n number of workflows can be triggered by an event. Okay, so what all, depending upon our requirements again here, we activate the corresponding event linkages. And the next one is the event simulation SWU0. Okay, so this is nothing used to simulate an event. The next one is SWI1. It shows the work item list. Okay, so this is a monitoring transaction where we will see all the work items. Okay, and all the details about that. So we can check the abled ones and analyze them further. Okay, so this is part four video. In part three video of SAP workflow, also we have discussed about few transactions. Okay, so this is nothing but a continuation video for that. Okay, thank you.